Welcome to a Healthy Living Video Log at WorkoutMaster.com. This is Ruben. That's Aaron. Today we're going to talk about gelatin and I find it's one of the best foods on earth. Let's turn this one apart, mister. <clears throat> well, gelatin is one of the, uh, the many proteins, or the few proteins I would say, that we recommend to people. It's very important to actually perhaps, uh, or it's important to recognize that we want to break protein down into two different categories per se to make things clear. One is the stuff that is actually made out of the connective tissue of the animal, we'll be talking about the gelatin itself, and the second one will be actually the flesh, muscle, meat, the organs, glands of the animal. So connective tissue has to do with the skin, the bones, and all the cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and stuff that the animal has that we want to take advantage of because it's going to be a great source of protein for us. You yeah. know guys, when it comes to food, it always uh, connects to me to other cultures. Let's say I, I lived in Armenia for some time, I lived in Russia, and I find those kind of foods that are made with gelatin mm -hmm. are pretty much engraved in culture. I, I can guarantee for, I don't know, I'm not sure about Spain. In Spain we have a lot of stuff where we use, uh, we use a lot of bones, we use different parts of the animals that some people, if they heard about it, they will probably uh, mm -hmm. hurl. But it's actually very tasty food, it's very healthy, and for many people that could not afford to buy the muscle meat, like the, the loin and all this, all this Yeah, stuff, because it's a cheap food. Consider. That's what they use, but it happens to be cheap food, but at the same time provides very high quality protein. And how, that's how these people were able to thrive with what they could afford. Yeah. Well, years when, I, when I lived in Russia, Russia, every single festive meal will always have a meal called chaladets, which is basically a cold, <laughs> which is basically a cold gelatin. Mm -hmm. uh, not a sweet one, but a cold gelatin with some vegetables and egg or something and some even muscle meat inside of it. Mm -hmm. Armenians make this meal called khash, and that's basically cow feet cleaned up, boiled for a long period of time, and becomes really thick gelatinous broth. <laughs> Then you eat. You can't do that because if you're gonna do that, you're probably gonna get glued, <laughs> glued on. No, it's because actually, it's that thick. It's like a glue. Is that the stuff that you made the other day? Yeah, it's pretty good actually. Yeah. There you go. It so too. gelatin is within pretty much every single culture, and there's reason for it, and that's what exactly what we want to talk about. We want to talk about how healing the qualities of gelatin are. That's right. Uh, let's figure I, out why. It's very important to recognize that actually some proteins actually are anti-inflammatory and some of the proteins are actually pro-inflammatory. So we have to begin to differentiate them and to be able to realize which ones we need a lot more of, how to combine them with other nutrients and make it to the advantage of actually feeling better and, and creating better energy and healing our bodies, period. Mm -hmm. So w when you cook, let's say, gel gelatinous broth, uh, you basically take connective tissue of animal and you cook it to the point where it kind of becomes liquid. Yeah, anything liquid, it's easily digestible. And we're gonna have an episode where we show you how to do this. How to liquefy it. Yeah. Um, so anytime you, it's easily digestible, so it can be easily used by your body. Uh, you basically know if you eat protein, it's gonna be broken down into amino acids, mm -hmm. and there's a certain amount of amino acids out there. Some of them tend to be uh, better than other ones. That's which right. ones are better, which ones are well, not so The good. ones that are the best for the body because of the connective tissue properties is gonna be the glycine and the proline, all right? They are ones that are the most harmful, and oftentimes, you know, people do not seem to be able to identify them or the harmful side effects that they have is going to be the tryptophan and the cysteine, which is mostly predominant, or well, I say most of it, all of it, within the, the, the meat itself, the organs and the, uh, and the flesh, the, the tissue. Mm -hmm. So gelatin, by virtue of the lack of those, or the less proportion of those, trypt of those uh, tryptophan and cysteine, is much more pro-anti-inflammatory, so it will actually help you lose inflammation on your body, while at the same time it's providing the rest of the amino acids that are very important building blocks for your own body itself. The one very important fact I want to mention, when we talked about broth in the previous episode, so if you have anything to do, let's say, uh, with the uh, Western Eye Prize Foundation, when, when you read a recipe of a broth, mm -hmm. a lot of times it just calls for the bones. Yes. And then I think it's very important to differentiate between a broth and gelatinous broth because for yes. me it's like two different things. Broth is nothing wrong with broth. 
No. It's an excellent way to get some minerals, some part of gelatin. Right. But if you truly want to get a gelatinous broth, you better take on some connective tissue and work with that. That's right. If we only were using like like bones and stuff like that, like uh, rib bones and marrow bones and stuff like that, you're not gonna get a lot of gelatin out of it because it doesn't contain it. What you can do is cook it for a long period of time and begin by uh, reverse osmosis. Actually, is it osmosis? I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Never mind. <laughs> But what you're going to do is by cooking all those bones for a long period of time, you're going to be able to draw all the minerals into the water, which later you will drain, mm -hmm. and actually we'll have a high dosage of, of uh, mineral broth, that's what I like to call it. But what Aram is telling you is completely different, you know, animal. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And, and if you want to figure out if you have gelatinous broth or not, all yeah. you do is when you cook it, after it's cooled down, you put it in a refrigerator, and it's supposed to look like a gel. And if you have that, that means you have gelatin broth, and chances are right. it will help you tremendously. Now let's talk really quickly about the benefits of it. What exactly does it do? The benefits of actually uh, consuming gelatin broth is not only do you have a high quality, very easy to digest protein that it will do wonders for your body. It has it has been known to help people with ulcers. People that have colitis, people reduce the incidence of seizures with people with epileptic attacks, uh, people re recovering from strokes. Uh, it's fantastic for people that, that have wounds in their body, they need to restore, you know, the, and, and heal those wounds. I mean, the, the, the attributes and the benefits are, are large. And it's the, the old recipes that generally call for a gelatinous food. Uh, especially in old time countries, old recipes, it always if you had some sort of injury, you broke a leg, yeah. you broke anything, uh, strain, sprain, yes. anything of that sort, usually gelatinous broth is excellent for and you. For when the body is in an immediate need for recovery and fast healing. That's mean when you get sick guys, so yes. that's an uh, old Jewish recipe of chicken broth thing, yeah. works. And it, even, and it, it even work better if you put chicken feet in that broth, not just the chicken. Absolutely, let's mention that because you can actually begin to make some of that gelatinous broth, very different from the mineral broth, and you have to use parts of the animal that have tendons, ligaments, and all kinds of other connective tissue attached to it. So for example, uh, ox tails are very good, lamb shanks, uh, the parts of, of, the, of the knees of the, of the cow, if you're making it with cow, those contain a lot of gelatin and they will produce a very gelatinous, very nutritious, highly effective protein. Absolutely. Do you have anything else? I think that's pretty much some setup. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you eat gelatinous broth, then your future looks better already. Until the next time, later.